I can definitely say I wasn't expecting more Hanako and double Hanako. I wasn't sure exactly what this character was, but the fact that they gave us a taste and revealed that apparently it's his brother makes, I think, it all the more intriguing, especially if that really is the person that Hanako did kill and what has filled him with so much regret and despair. Like, I really do appreciate how they're, like, teasing it. They're not just, like, saying this is the arc and we're just only going to focus on this lookalike Hanako. No, we're going to sprinkle it in. We're going to tease you. We're going to make you question what the hell is going on with this character and why does it relate to apparently the person spreading the rumors and what's going on with their little club that feels very reminiscent to what we see with Hanako, Yashiro, as well as Kyo and just... I love that. I love how it's like on one hand you got these three characters trying to basically stop the rumors and have a very peaceful resolution. Then apparently we got another three who are trying to start them and just cause chaos. I guess it's kind of like that yin and yang sort of dilemma there, which I'm really enjoying, I have to say. And this was a very anticipated episode for me. I mean, I'm always anticipating Hanako, but I think after seeing just what we saw in the library and just kind of the secrets that unfolded, it was a pretty emotionally heavy episode last week. Often with stories such as these, you're pretty used to just saying, okay, you have this emotionally heavy arc and then you're just going to skip it and say, all right, I mean, characters are going to get over it. It's just a dead character, right? Like who really cares what he went through in his original life? That's how a lot of these stories would go if they are trying to kind of tiptoe that serious and kind of comedic nature but I was really happy to see how Yashiro was actually dealing with that actually trying to separate herself for a bit from Hanako because she was actually pretty just concerned and confused as someone really should be especially seeing what you just saw knowing that apparently this is a murderer but then also seeing how he was treated in his life and how he feels so distant and just not really wanting to open up I'm really happy how they explored her arc and just how she kind of felt very confused and isolated and how she ultimately decided to really push through and kind of say, you know what, I am going to stick by you. It didn't feel like it happened too fast or too slow, but a nice middle ground to really make it feel like last arc, last episode, that whole library situation wasn't some disposable event, but actually something that was supposed to relate to a serious moment and is probably going to remain relevant going forward. I think they easily could have just had something very simple with the idea of donuts. I mean, when I read the title of the episode, I assumed it was going to be a donut apparition. I'm 100% serious. I was expecting a floating donut monster, and then we got normal donut cooking. And on one hand, that's a little disappointing. You're thinking to yourself, you're coming up with this crazy idea. But then on the other hand, it lended itself to be a lot more tame, and in doing so, a much more emotionally heavy episode with a very positive outlook at least on the Central 3's relationship, because that easily could have been so generic and boring, and I'm really happy to see how they handled that dilemma, because honestly, when you have apparently this friend who is a murderer slash dead person slash hiding their past, like, what are you supposed to do, especially when they didn't tell you about the past, but you just kind of saw it after dealing with the previous event? It should have some form of weight. It should have some form of consequence, and I was happy to see that characters were recognizing that things were wrong and how she was kind of pushing back. It's very easy to write situations like that as she just says, okay, that's his past, I understand, I'm just going to say I'm your best friend, well, let's move past that. But I think in most people's hands, that would be something that would cause you a sleepless night or two, to say the least. And I was really happy to see how they incorporated someone who could easily just be the sideline potential romantic interest, and even though there's always flirtatious moments, still nice to see that that entire sequence, even though apparently he's an amazing cook, as said by Taro, being like, what are you talking about? You're an amazing cook, as he shoves another donut in his mouth so he doesn't say anything to reveal that he actually just wanted a little bit of alone time with our girl. I thought it was really wholesome to see that entire sequence be like, oh, it's for my uh, little sister. Yeah, my little sister. And just that entire sequence, I was expecting something bad to happen, but the fact it was just a way to decompress and say, listen, we heard what his favorite food was, plain donuts. Let's make him some donuts. Give him the donuts. Let's fix what's going on here. And just the idea of listening and actually having that friendship aura. Of course, there is a little romantic undertone and then her just kind of pushing away some comedic relief. But at the end of the day, I thought it was like the perfect kind of stress reliever without making us, the viewer, feel stressed, but understanding and kind of empathizing with her being like, okay, I understand why you're so heartbroken or why you're so confused and distraught. And it's really nice to see how they kind of use such a basic idea, a cooking session, to allow for such healing to happen and to see how happy Hanukkah was after receiving those donuts. It's a very basic idea for an episode, for a majority of the episode, it was, you know, they're a little distant, then they made some donuts, and then obviously there was some conflict afterwards, but still, like, that's the idea it went for, but I thought the simplicity 
really went in its favor because it allowed for these characters to really mend from a point that could really shape the anime into a different direction. They could have had a complete falling out. They could have had something where Hanako completely changes his persona. But the fact that they more or less ended back up at the same spot, but just recognizing there's still a lot more left to go, it kind of feels like they reach a point of character development without completely surpassing it and saying like, okay, the show that we've come to know and love, it's still going to be there for the remainder of this season. However, with that said, we definitely are seeing the pieces move in a direction to show that this cast is evolving, as seen by the brothers themselves. It'd be super easy to write it as the big bro says you need to kill your ghost friend, and then he's like, okay, I'm going to try to kill my new ghost friend, and then they obviously have the conflict, it fails, and then they mend, and then the brother kind of moves on being like, okay, I guess I was wrong. But seemingly, we don't even have to reach that moment, as seen by the pushing back saying, hey, if Hanako does something bad, I will deal with it. There has to be a different way. Like, there's literally a little bunny walking by you. We could have killed that, but look at how peaceful and normal it is now. Granted, that bunny was kind of playing double sides there, but still, on a face value level, it definitely is saying, I'm going to do something that you can't totally predict. We're not just going to say we're going to force conflict as you typically see with brother-on-brother -brother conflict and how one wants to hurt and one wants to mend. It's nice how they're kind of like standing their ground and kind of confronting their problems while also confronting the past. And that's something that's really doing wonders for the show in the long run, I have to say. The idea of seemingly brother of Hanako popping up was something that, once again, I was not expecting. I mean, the first time we got a glimpse of him, I was like, okay, maybe that is like the same Hanako. Maybe it's something about a rumor and how if you summon Hanako, maybe you get your own. But seemingly, I mean, just based on the little bits of dialogue we had, that is the brother and apparently the murder victim and seemingly a brother who wants to be around him, but like can't. It's like there's so much possibilities and I'm not going to sit here and speculating on all the little details that could or could not happen. We have very little information to go off of, but I definitely have to say when we truly get their confrontation, that's going to last more than 30 seconds or a minute. I definitely think we're going to see the best content in the anime without a doubt in my mind because it just feels like there's a lot of history there and the little bits of history that we got to see last week, it was great and amazing, but it just feels like it's the tip of the iceberg. There's still so much more left to explore and I'm really enjoying how it kind of feels like we have two sides that are very similar but also complete opposites. One side trying to help the ghost, the other side trying to release the ghost on the school. And I think you need a good set of antagonists or someone to really kind of shake the core foundation and the fact that the person on the radio has been basically not only just, you know, directing the rumors, but kind of creating them to begin with is a really interesting concept, I have to say. Now, I know some people who have read the manga. Now, I haven't read the manga, obviously, to this anime, as I've said every single week, you know, I am an anime original. I have seen some people say that they have been skipping some arcs, and I know some people who've read the manga are disappointed with that or, you know, a little upset with that. Even though I haven't read it, I have read manga that have had anime adaptations where it's had a couple of seasons. A lot of times what happens, I just want to throw this out there, when you are making an anime adaptation, now, those arcs that have been apparently cut might pop up within this season. It is possible. Sometimes what happens is an anime, they direct their flow to say, okay, yeah, this arc, we want to use it for this character at episode 9 instead of popping it in at episode 6 with how it chronologically happens in the manga. What most likely is going to happen is I kind of expect that this will get at least a second season, more than likely. I just kind of feel like the way the production seems and how fluid it is, it just kind of feels like this is something that will at the very least get a second season. Most likely those arcs that have apparently been cut will probably pop up in the second season when they, even though it doesn't happen directly like that in the manga, what they can do is when, you know, if it was say the brother's arc or something like that. They'll have a brother's moment that happens in the manga and then they'll just incorporate that into basically the cut arcs and things like that. Obviously some people, they want it to fall 100% to the manga, but either for just it flows better for the anime they're doing it like that, or in the case of this, because they're only doing a 12 episode anime, they clearly want to get to a specific point in the manga and rather than just adapting all these arcs and speeding by them, they're cutting them for now and then probably will revisit them later. That happens all the time with anime production. And yeah, I can understand getting upset if they never go back to those arcs, but I kind of feel like that's what they're building up to. They want to get to a specific point in the anime, end it on a satisfying note, a big moment, and then when they most likely get that season two, they'll incorporate those arcs at a later date. I know often with manga readers, they say like, no, it can't, it has to happen at this point because it aids in terms of development or things like that. And that very well can be true, but often it also work very well doing it in a different way at a later time. It would be different if they never went back to it and we got a complete adaptation or something like that. But I just want to throw that out there because sometimes I see that a lot. And even though I don't read a lot of manga, the ones that I have read, often they do change things. Even like my favorite manga of all time, Attack on Titan, right? Like they don't fall that 
perfectly. They change it, they adjust it, sometimes at the helm of Isayama, but also just doing their own things to match the flow better for the anime, because just directly copying and pasting a manga to anime doesn't always flow the best. So that's probably why they're doing it. It's most likely because they just want to specifically end at a certain point in the anime, which I don't see an issue with. I definitely would like to see those arcs that apparently haven't been animated as of yet and have skipped them. I think there was another arc that they skipped in this episode. I could be mistaken, but that's most likely what's going to happen. So I just want to throw that out there just because I know I'm sure there's going to be some people talking about that in the comments. Most likely they just want to end it at a certain moment and then probably in season two we'll see it. I love the idea of having a girl who's actually still young in age actually having conflicting feelings about what she saw and how they ultimately mended that, how the brother conflict doesn't feel forced and just kind of like, okay, we're just going to make sure that they hate each other or they're going to, you know, force this conflict between clearly growing friends. It's nice to see anime avoid the cliches that I've come to expect and a show that looks like this, functions like this, I just keep expecting the cliches. But Hanako kun still avoids the cliches with grace, and that makes it a damn fun experience. But as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Be it for manga readers, anime originals, what did you think? And where do you think it's going to go next week, especially with some of the twists we did experience in this episode? Let me know. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy, and also be sure to subscribe if you have been new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.